What's going on guys, Vic VP here. On this one today, I'm gonna to be responding to the shocking backlash that myself and B Kong has received amongst the pinball community with this whole John Wick reveal. It feels a little weird to put my social media plug in here because I'm doing this whole response to this backlash. And uh, you know, most of these people have been like, you're trying to get viewers. And well, if you are a regular viewer of mine or if you've seen my other videos, I always start my videos with my social media plugin. That's what I do. So without further ado, if you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. There's a convenient link tree link down below. Go click it. You can see my TikTok, my Instagram, and YouTube. Also be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Yes, I normally do that. I didn't do that just for the John Wick video. That's my normal plugin. <laughs> now, all joking aside, I'm making this video to really kind of clear the air, number one, on a couple of things that were said amongst pinball podcasters and amongst the pinball community. Um, right now, it is Monday morning, May 13th, so we're looking at, what, like four or five days since the review video went out. So basically, I, I got all the feedback uh, along with B Kong, and uh, I'm just taking this video to address uh, you know, concerns that came about and also to clear the air. I'm gonna be taking some clips. I'm gonna talk about my favorite podcasters and answering kind of like some stuff that they said on their podcast just to clarify things and then i'm going to also give you my brutal brutal honest opinion on a couple of things that like i noticed uh in my shoes now first and foremost in all honesty some of the content might not even have been about me or about b um most of the podcasters they just kind of said that you know they're questioning stern's marketing team for reaching out to content creators Nobody really mentioned like my name, so I'm just kind of taking it in as I feel like some of the podcasters were talking about me, even though they mentioned my name, except for, uh, you know, Kaneda. <laughs> That's one dude that definitely, um, definitely mentions my name slash I got the honor of two posts on Kaneda's uh, Facebook group. But here's the funny thing. Um, I've been in the pinball community i mean i might not be super popular but i've 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 owned my machines for a year now and i play pinball so i i'm, I'm there you know it's kind of like you guys are like here and i'm just here like hey how's it going <laughs> so i you know i i do play pinball not so much i do own pinball so like i have like i said i'm gonna just be talking my opinions and and such i think the first thing though to make very clear we have to address the comment that everybody keeps saying is Stern's marketing team. Why did Stern's marketing team reach out to these content creators? Now, if you don't know what's happening, basically Stern released John Wick. A week before the release, Stern's marketing team has a third party marketing team that reached out to content creators, said, hey, you have an opportunity to play Stern's newest release game. You could take a couple of footage. You could give your review videos, follow an embargo. And then once the embargo is lifted, you could post your content. Now off the bat, there's a couple of things I said there. So I hope you were listening very carefully. But in all honesty, if you do a quick search for John Wick Pinball, there's really only three content creators. I'm... <laughs> I'm, I've never been labeled that, but uh, there's three content creators or influencers that actually have footage slash took this opportunity. I'm one of them. My buddy B Kong over at Kong's R Us is honestly the main reason why I got this opportunity. And then another YouTube channel by the name of Easy Allies. Other than that, there's no other content that was made from content creators. Now these content creators got the opportunity to play the game early and they also got the assets, basically what a distributor would get. And you could use these assets in your video as you're talking and reviewing the product. Now, what's the issue? The pinball community is pissed. They are super pissed, strictly because they do not know who the hell these content creators slash influencers are. It's funny to talk in like the third person because I'm one of them. <laughs> I'm just, I was never uh, labeled a content creator uh, or an influencer. So that's, it's just kind of, I, I don't know if it's cool or if it's funny, but yeah, I'm one of those content creators. Now, the one thing I do want to say is that although I'm not very well known in the pinball community, 
neither is B, and definitely this Easy Allies. Um, the only thing I do want to say, I own pinball machines. I've been in this hobby almost a year. And what I say by me been in this hobby for almost a year, my godfather is going to hit one year in August. That's when I purchased it. Um, because of the godfather, I really went down this rabbit hole of pinball. I'm also an arcade builder. And yes, you might hate me, but I do also build virtual pinball machines. I've been doing that for the past four years. So although virtual pinball, I'm not going to get into that argument. Um, you know, I know pinball. I, I enjoy pinball. It's, uh, it's, uh, I've said it, it's, it's an addiction. Once you buy one machine and you get your hands on one machine, you, you get hooked. And uh, yeah, I'm proud to say that I'm hooked on pinball. Now, as far as the pinball community, I, I'm just not on that level. Uh, I give a big shout out to Joel um, over at Triple Drain and Flipping Out. Um, luckily, he labeled me as an arcade channel. Uh, whereas other channels labeled me and B Kong the arcade one up community. Uh, I don't, I don't, I build my cabinets. <laughs> my cabinets aren't anywhere near arcade one up. Now, to mention with B Kong, yes, his starting was arcade one up, but he's, he's gone away from that. So it kind of sucks that like people label him as an arcade one up guy when. If you watch his recent stuff, he's not really doing too much arcade one-up. He still mentions arcade one-up. He'll still do his thing, but um, yeah, he's labeled, and I got labeled on a podcast or two that I'm an arcade one-up kind of guy. Now, the one thing I definitely want to just kind of mention, um, you know, luckily myself and B Kong, we own pinball machines. Uh, B Kong is in a loaner program. We'll talk about that later on, but he's actually purchased three or four machines. He's also done live Godzilla mods on his table. Like he's done live streams of him modifying like the saucer and the, the, the moving Godzilla mech in the rear. Um, it's just sad to learn that the pinball community doesn't know us. And that's okay. Everybody doesn't know somebody. You know, you got to start somewhere. I'm not really arguing that. The only thing I, I feel I, I feel like I gut punched is like, at least I own pinball machines and I play pinball. And I know like the lingo. I might not know it to the expert level, but at least I was talking in my review video as I knew lingo. I'm talking about right orbits. I'm talking about slingshots. I'm talking about, you know, uh, ball locks and mechs and diverters. And it just, it feels like all that went over everybody's head. Cause they're just like, who the fuck, who, who are you? And the whole time while people are like, who are these people? I just say to myself, the day that the review video of John Wick went out, the day before I posted a video talking about my Royal Rumble you know, a, a 1994 Data East Royal Rumble that I scored that I plan to do a total teardown and a complete LED conversion kit and a rubber kit. And that didn't get any views. So it kind of just sucks that nobody really went to the channels and like looked back because the day before I had a Royal Rumble video. So uh, what am I getting at? At least I play pinball. Same thing with B Kong. At least like we are we're in pinball together. We, we play it. We own our machines. We know how to play pinball. Uh, Kaneda said it best. He's like, you know, you're like a watch guy trying to, you know, promote a car. At least I, I, I play pinball. <laughs> don't hate me too much. <laughs> now I don't want to be all over the place on this video, but I think the main thing we have to address is this whole thing about Stern's marketing team. Why did Stern's marketing team reach out to these content creators? I'm going to tell you straight out how I understand what happened. Keep in mind, and I mentioned it many times in my video, I didn't get this opportunity unless B Kong got involved slash invited me. Off the bat, understand something. Stern has a marketing team. Who that is, I have no idea. But Stern also has a third party marketing team. Again, this is what I understand. 
This third party marketing team is the one that is getting these content creators involved in this loaner program along with they're the ones that reached out to the content creators and said, hey, you could come down and play Stern's John Wick. So off the bat, for people to say Stern's marketing team reached out to the wrong people, it, in my eyes, it wasn't Stern's marketing team. It was a third party. And that third party did what they're supposed to do, which is from my understanding and how I see it from the outside, they are reaching people that have huge subscriber counts and likes on TikTok and YouTube and Instagram and all that. They are doing what they're supposed to do. They're trying to get these content creators to promote a product. Not Stern's marketing team. It's the third party marketing team that Stern hires. Now it's funny is that while I shot my review video, I also shot a story time video talking about how I got the opportunity to play John Wick from beginning to end, how B messaged me and all that. I'll put that at the end of this video. I don't want to make a separate video. I feel like I've already spoken a lot about John Wick. So you'll see that at the end, but I'm just going to make a long story short and give you a summary on it. Now let's keep in mind about time frames. John Wick's videos on YouTube from Stern was officially released Tuesday, May 7th. I got the message from B Kong on Monday, uh, April 29th. Monday afternoon, April 29th, Bcom messaged me and goes, hey, Vic, man, I have an opportunity for you. Are you interested? I said, of course, B. Like, what kind of question is that? What do you got for me? He goes, Stern is going to be in New York tomorrow. Would you like to go and check out their new upcoming game? And I said, of course, B. What the hell kind of question is that? Like, yes. So he said, send me your email. I'm going to reach out to this marketing firm that I deal with which is the same marketing firm that he deals with the, the loaner program. Uh, and he said, you have to wait for an email. Hopefully you get it. Good luck. A couple of hours go by this marketing firm emails me and goes, Hey Vic, B told us that you're in New York and you'd be interested to check out Stern's new machine. Could you get to this address tomorrow? We have two appointment slots available. One was at 11 AM or 1130 AM. And the other one was at one, one to two. I obviously emailed back. I gave them the time slot I wanted and I was booked, ready to go. Like I said, I have the whole story at the end of this video, but I do mention in it that I was under the assumption that I was going to go to a building. There was going to be one machine there and I was going to meet other people. I thought I was going to meet other content creators. I thought it was going to be a big deal, kind of like a big game reveal where you kind of like walk into a warehouse and it's like, you know, 30 people getting ready for an unveiling and the, the tarp comes off. No, uh, that didn't happen. Uh, to my surprise, I was alone. <laughs> I was terrified and alone. I thought I was going to meet other people. I was alone. Not only was I alone, but shockingly, Seth Davis was there. I wasn't expecting that either. So those were two monster surprises that I just wasn't ready for. The big thing that people don't know is that it was only a one hour time slot. That's it. I only had one hour. One hour to film, get my experience, play the game, try to get footage. In all honesty, the appointment is like, you have one hour. You could do whatever you want, you know, whether you want to capture footage, whether you want to get ready to make a review about it, or if you want to just waste time and stare at the machine, you could do anything you want in this hour, but granted, you know, Stern representatives will be there to answer questions and talk about the game. So a lot of people don't know that especially like when you look at the review video and then you see like my footage and my gimbal going crazy and people are like, what the fuck did you shoot? I only had an hour and you could only do so much in an hour and you're going to see, I'm going to mention it. I'm not the type that went in like cameras, guns blazing. Uh, you know, people are human. You know, I was in like shock to meet Seth Davis. I'm not going to shove a camera in his face and go tell me about this game for the first like 30 minutes. It was just one on one. I was talking to him like a regular human being and he was telling me the game and then I'm like, oh shit, I only have 30 minutes. Let me get my cameras out and let's start recording. Now, if you've been listening very carefully, Stern marketing team did not reach out to me. They did not reach out to Bcom. It was this third party marketing firm that reached out. Really? They reached out to Bcom. I don't even understand how Bcom knew about the New York thing. So that I can't answer. You could go ask Bcom yourself. I never really asked him the question. 
I'm under the assumption that he probably got like a list uh, of like locations that were happening or this third party marketing team was like, hey, do you know anybody in New York that like would be interested? And he's like, yeah, I know Vic and great, right? <laughs> So that's the story about how I got to play John Wick. And I mentioned it many times. I give a big shout out to B. Kong because without him, I'm a nobody. Nobody knows me. This, this marketing team doesn't know me. They, don't, they have no idea who Vic VP is. Again, if B. Kong did not mention me, I would not have had that opportunity. Now, the one big thing I do want to mention, and if you look very carefully, again, I listen to the Pinball podcasts and you got... Facebook groups and the pinball community on pin side and I see everything and again people don't really mention names except for B a lot of people are mentioning B um, only Kaneda has mentioned my name physically but other you know podcasts like you know flipping out triple drain uh, loser kid they don't really physically mention my name uh, which is fine I'm just I just understand that I'm in that realm of the content creators I got to play the game now, if you look very carefully, if you do a search on YouTube or anywhere, no other content creator posted content on the New York location that I was in. As I mentioned before, there's this Easy Allies YouTube channel. If you look carefully, they're in the same location that B. Kong was in, which is the LA location. It's kind of weird to see that nobody else from New York posted anything. And then again, like I said, I had two appointment time slot options. Did they only have two that day? Was there 10 and there was only two left? I don't know. But as of right now, I'm the only one that has the footage from New York with Seth Davis. Now, if you look at view counts and all that, uh, I'm real quick right now, I have it up. Easy Allies has 261,000 subscribers. His John Wick video has 5.2 thousand views in five days. 25 comments. Um, and there's some people that are like, whoa, like I didn't know that pinball is still there. I'm not well versed in pinball, but this is really fascinating to be exposed to a whole world I have not been aware of. That is, I'm reading somebody's comment right now on this dude's channel. And if you really think about it, that is the goal of this marketing team, not Stern, this third party. Uh, and I'm going to say it right out and I see, I feel it. Uh, and I see it. It's a no brainer in this day and age views and sub counts. That's really what matters in this day and age. I'm, I'm, I'm always aiming to get up there and, you know, get all the subs and all that because you know you make the content people like it they subscribe to you but yes uh you know how can i get on this loaner program uh i feel like i might need more subscribers and likes doesn't matter if you're you know uh, doesn't matter if you're canada you're the number one pinball podcaster they don't give a shit they want to know how many likes and subs you have so yes unfortunately in this day and age that's that's just the way it is. And again, if you listen to what I'm saying, this is not stern marketing. That's where I'm seeing all the podcasters uh, in the pinball community. You know, what is Stern's marketing team thinking? Who, who the fuck are these? It, stern had nothing to do with it. When I met Seth Davis, he had, he, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it flat out. He had no idea who I was. And I'll be honest, I don't think he cared. I mean, obviously you're going to be very, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very pleased to meet you. Thank you so much. Let me show you this machine. I'm very anxious to show you. You know, I don't want to say that he doesn't care who I am, but I was probably just another content creator. He didn't know who I was. He definitely did, had no idea who I was. Do you really know that you made it when somebody's like, oh shit, you're Vic VP? Man, I love your stuff. I love what you just did. You just showed Royal Rumble. That's when you know you made it. You ever see like that video where like Jay-Z's in like the subway and he's talking to the old lady and the lady's like, who are you? You must be famous. And Jay-Z goes, I guess I'm not that famous. And it's true. <laughs> uh, you really aren't that famous until like you get recognized like that. So yeah. Now don't worry, I'm not gonna leave you hanging. I'm still gonna give you details about this embargo, about when I received assets. Cause there is a part on Triple Drain where Travis, he's a little bit upset. 
And I'm actually, when I was listening to him, I'm actually shocked at, as far as a distributor's standpoint, I'm shocked at like how they get content. Um, so I'm going to basically take this time now to, you know, pull some clips from podcasts and uh, just address it. I'm going to first start off with Loser Kid Pinball. Now off the bat, I still will watch all the podcasts. I have no hard feelings. You know, I, it's not like I, I hate I hate you, loser kid. I can't stand you anymore. I, this is just now like, you know, I'm going to take clips and then I'll just answer truthfully. Uh, so again, we're all just, we're all in this together. That's the biggest thing. This pinball community, um, you know, we all enjoy the same thing. We all enjoy the game of pinball. Whether you are a well-known YouTuber, podcaster, or if you're just a casual person that's just getting into it, let's be real. We all like pinball. That's like the main thing I want to get out of this. I might be a nobody to the pinball community, but at least I play pinball and I enjoy pinball. I'm not, I'm not a guy that, that likes watches and uh, is trying to talk pinball. <laughs> much. You had some of these guys referring to expression lights as intelligent lights, you know, yeah. and, and things like that. And it's just like, it's like you were saying, Josh, it's just the, the polish isn't there. You know, and now, yes, I unfortunately, sadly, yes, I dropped the bomb on that. I accidentally called expression lighting, intelligent lighting. Uh, man, pff, fuck me. Right. I don't know anything about pinball. <laughs> I, I literally watched the footage. And I was like, oh, shit, he's right. I accidentally called intel. I, I called it intelligent lighting. Um, you know, it's I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't own stern machines, obviously. Um, expression lighting, yes, I, I admit, I messed that up. Now, the one thing that many people don't know, if you've seen my original content, if you see my normal stuff that I post weekly versus the review video and this video, this is completely shot totally different. I mean, I'm talking like lighting, the camera is so close to my face. I never shoot film like this and you know i guess i did an okay job for a first impression that nobody's seen you know me do uh many people don't know this but i did that whole review video uh it was monday night uh we didn't get the assets i'm gonna say i i didn't get the assets uh of john wick meaning like the you know the the flyers and like the pictures of the cabs like I did add on my review video, which again, I'm gonna talk about what Travis mentioned later on. Um, I, I started shooting the review video Monday at 7 p.m. because I got the assets at six. I shot and edited it that entire night. I didn't go to bed until 6 a.m. And 12 p.m. is when the video goes live. So I'm going to give myself a nice little, you know, pat on the back. Cause number one, I, I, I did something that I don't normally do. So I was out of my comfort zone. Number one. Uh, and then number two, I feel like I did a great job. I was aiming to talk pinball. I want to make sure I use pinball language and basically going through like the cabinets. I, I did what you normally see on a review video. Now the downside kind of like the only negatives I've seen uh, people complain that my focus was going in and out and that I should turn off the lights because it makes me blurry and something about my audio, uh, my audio level. So I'm going to hopefully fix that in this video. And then the last thing is that I, um, I called it intelligent lighting and not expression lighting. <laughs> it's funny too. Sorry. I speaking of that to that guy who said that because you know, it's not his gig, is it? It's not his gig to know those things. Well, not only that, but he had a Godfather in the background the whole, the whole time. time. Yeah, the whole. You have a reveal yeah. video for John Wick, and you're sporting another company's pinball machine. Put, yeah. put John Wick back there, yeah. Yeah, I love this comment because you notice the Don back there. Uh, this comment made me chuckle. It made me laugh because there's two things that happen in this quick 10 second clip. Um, the first thing I'm going to address. Um, the gentleman suggested that I should put a John Wick back there. I didn't want to do that. What do I do? Green screen and then put a John Wick static picture? I think that's dumb. 
Not to again, I'm not I'm not downplaying the gentleman. I'm not trying to call you dumb. I just think that it's dumb for me. You know, now you see so much John Wick. Now you're doing what a cliche reviewer would do. I have this in the background. Number one, um, I love pinball. I'm proud of my first ever Godfather, and also it's the collector's edition. <laughs> so we gotta we gotta give that plug. And in all honesty, for me to have this in the background. It shows you that I play pinball. I, I'm not a watch guy. And people that don't understand what this watch guy thing is, Kaneda uh, mentioned this thing uh, to B. Kong specifically. He basically said, you know, you're a watch guy trying to sell a car. Um, I, this is a perfect background. It's arcades. These are machines that I actually built. And then it's also real pinball machines. Yes, they are Jersey Jacks. Some people do consider me a Jersey Jack fanboy because I do have a Godfather and a Toy Story. I have a whole story time on my whole journey on buying those things. So I wanted to show you guys that I'm not just some guy doing a review. I actually own pinball machines. And yes, the Godfather is specifically placed right there, not just for the review video. That is my background. Whether I'm live streaming or just doing this, who doesn't like the Don over their shoulder? To people who are not in the industry to promote your product, shouldn't you also consider giving early access to people who are in the industry to promote your product? Now, the thing that he mentions about, you know, they should have reached out to people in the pinball community. I get that totally. I'm going to really talk about that more once we get into um, Triple Drain. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. If you want my brutal honest opinion, obviously Stern should be showing this machine, uh, you know, to their community. I understand that they're trying to get, you know, other views on it. Uh, Loser Kid and also, I believe also Triple Drain mentions it. I'm going to watch it later on. But they also mention, you know, they should have gotten the slow-mo guys involved or they should have gotten Unbox Therapy involved so i kind of chuckle at that because you're you want you want them to show off the game and it's going right back to where we were where unbox therapy and the slow-mo guys yeah they have like millions of subscribers so now we're just doing a whole you know it's it's a whole 360 um <laughs> you know what i mean i, I don't want to sound doing you know what i mean we're basically now going back to let's get more popular channels now uh, to promote this stuff. And uh, I thought that's not what the pinball community wants. Now, again, big thank you to Loser Kid. I did comment on his video, so it's pretty cool to go back and forth. Not in a negative way. Uh, I do feel like Loser Kid now has a little bit more respect for me. It's funny, like I said, nobody drops names. But um, I, I'm clearly the one with the Godfather in the background. <laughs> this is also another cool thing, and this is what I'm proud of myself. Um, if I'm gonna talk about Canada last, because that's the one that you know it really, you know, it it's back and forth. Um, I'm giving myself a pat on the back because I'm actually reading comments and then I'm also replying to them. So I'm not just some random reviewer content creator that just makes a video and then is like all right whatever uh again like i said i enjoy pinball so i was I'm, I'm anxious to see and hear what people's thoughts were on videos and such now we're gonna head on over to the triple drain podcast and in all brutal honesty probably my favorite uh triple drain and flipping out uh joel when he's playing pinball wednesdays with his brother it reminds me of me playing pinball with my brother uh, I have you guys, no joke, every time while I'm working, I have a TV in my workshop and I have you guys on in the background. So uh, if you guys want to say favorites, I would probably say Joel and Triple Drain is probably my go-to uh, if I want to know any pinball uh, details. Now, it's really great. I did email Joel um, and I did comment on Triple Drain's video. Uh, I even wrote to Joel, I was like, I honestly was surprised that you guys didn't do a stream on Wednesday, like with a flipping out and friends talking about John Wick, where I was planning 
to be in like the chat, but unfortunately you guys didn't stream that. If you if you guys did, I could have told you what I'm gonna tell you now. But yes, just so you guys know, um, I I enjoy your videos. Now let's take a look real quick at what Travis mentions, cause what he says, I'm actually very surprised. How does it make you feel knowing that Stern tried a new marketing technique this this reveal, where they had uh media blitzes with different influencers in the arcade realm where those arcade those influencers were given exclusive access to play the game as well as exclusive assets to media creation and media as in here are high res images here's high res anything you need so that they could produce uh creative material that would drop at the same moment as Stern's creative material. So they don't sell the games, right. but they were given all that exclusive access one week plus prior than every actual person that sells the game for Stern. So just, a th just, just with that in mind, how does that make you feel, Travis? <laughs> Man, you're putting me yeah. on the spot, aren't yeah. you, Joel? <laughs> yeah. Um, Tom, how does okay. it make you feel? Why, why, why Travis is, <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it okay. sucks. Now, real quick, Joel mentions that content creators got the assets a week before. I just want to clarify that, Joel. We didn't. Um, and again, we, it's me and B. <laughs> um, uh, and just, and also for Travis to know, I got the assets link Monday. That is May 6th. So the day before it was released at 6 p.m., uh, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so again, just so you guys understand, the viewers, uh, the assets links that I got, I got to see the actual like reveal trailer. I got to see the featurette trailer, and then I got a Dropbox um, of images. You know, the cabinets and the playfields and all that. Now, um, I'm gonna mention something because Travis, you know, and Joel was under the assumption that. I got this stuff a week before and I give myself a pat on the back. I guess my editing was that good. Like I mentioned before, uh, I stayed up until 5.30 in the morning to edit that video. And I didn't even start my review, like shooting it like I am now, until seven o'clock Monday night. So I, I could understand how you guys got the vision that um, I got the assets way before. In terms of so I, I guess your question is, is how do I feel about it in terms of being a dealer that wants to sell these games? Yes, I know you... that this, I know that that is something that you and many other dealers have asked for for a long time right. and you've never had it. And now you see that there are people that got that privilege um, and it wasn't you. So I'll put it this way. I, I was aware that there was influencers being used before for other things like if you just pay attention to it i was aware of now i want to touch up on something that travis says i'm a total outsider i'm just a regular guy that likes pinball but what he says here is honestly mind-blowing to me i'm uh i'm shocked like i mentioned before and you'll hear it in my story time video i was under the assumption that i was going to go to this empty warehouse and there was going to be a pinball machine with a tarp over it and i was going to have you know other people and i was going to network and i was hoping to meet some people and i thought they were going to unveil a cabinet and a bunch of flash bulbs are going off and we're taking pictures i was shocked that that didn't happen and then as travis is speaking about him being a distributor and he didn't get any of this and it's his job to sell the game he has no idea how this game even plays he doesn't even know what it looks like that is uh that's that's shocking to me. It's also a head, uh, a head scratcher. Now, it's crazy, but also great that this happened, this whole whirlwind. Um, Joel also did a stream with George Gomez, and he's questioning, like, the marketing team. And Gomez is even like, yeah, like, we have to, we have to fix some things. Um, so, you know, Gomez is talking. He's all, like, you know, everybody's now, like, calm and at ease. But he addresses like the obvious and like, you know, he even mentioned we released the game and then we're not even streaming the game until three or four days later. So it's kind of cool that, you know, at least they notice it. Now, for me, I was under the assumption that like 
you know, all companies, you know, I'm, I'm into gaming. Like, you know, look at like video games where they send the games to IGN probably a week before they're released. And then, you know, IGN could play the game, get footage from it and then review it properly. I just thought that was like a gaming kind of standard. So it's kind of shocking to hear that. I guess Stern doesn't do that. I can't answer for Jersey Jack. Um, I don't think Jersey Jack does what Stern did and reaches out to a third party marketing firm. But remember, I'm also a Jersey Jack fanboy, like the community, the community assumes I am. <laughs> but I mean, again, there's always room for improvement. Uh, you know, Gomez now could say to all the distributors, Hey, listen, come down to our, you know, brand new facility that we built. You know, they should have done it on Monday. Everybody come on down. You guys see the machines and you know, you got to buy your plane ticket. I'm pretty sure distributors would do that. Again, it's their job to sell the game. So from what Travis is saying, I totally understand the frustration. I mean, I, I totally get it. Uh, I just wanted to be clear that I got the assets Monday, 6 p.m. He mentions, you mentioned about a webinar. I don't know what day and time your webinar was, but believe me, I totally could understand the frustration. And then I could also understand how you guys probably thought that I got the assets a week before. <laughs> That's some good editing, right? <laughs> Aside from all this, you know, and I, I kind of sit back and I'm like, you know, we all enjoy the game of pinball. You guys didn't know I like pinball, I guess. I mean, my, my godfather obviously doesn't show that I know pinball or I like pinball, but the main thing is that, you know, everybody kind of forgot the focus and that's pinball. If you see my review on John Wick, I actually say that I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy a John Wick because I'm, it's the theme is not for me. I was just proud of myself because I'm, I feel like I was throwing lingo out. I'm talking about shots. This is really for Joel. I was hoping you were going to do a thing on Wednesday. I specifically was talking about diverters in the rear. Cause I thought maybe on Wednesday, you know, you usually do your, your mapping and you're like, Oh, I think this shot goes this way. So I, that part was for you, Joel. <laughs> Come on, man. That was for you. <laughs> I was thinking about you, but yeah, I just, I feel like, you know, uh, if it was somebody that doesn't know pinball, they, they wouldn't be throwing lingo out. So it, in all honesty, it just, it's kind of, um, I was disappointed. Uh, you know, although I'm not a popular, you know, pinball streamer or podcaster, I was just like, who the fuck are you? And then I'm just like out in the barn, like I'm done. <laughs> that was probably the only one thing that upset me, but I'm over it. It's a-okay because this whole thing now, um, you know, if you didn't know me and if you didn't know B Kong, I guess you know us now. I guess we're, uh, <laughs> we're in your sights now. This now is a perfect segue to Kaneda. Now, it's actually very funny. Um, I follow Kaneda. I now to date proudly could say that Kaneda has four, four posts about me. Yeah. For somebody that is not known in the pinball community, Kaneda has posted four times about me. <laughs> now I don't know how to feel about that. Um, you know, Kaneda comes off, uh, Kaneda is Kaneda. That's how I learned it. I had no idea who Kaneda was. So get this, right? This is, this, is, this is a good story time real quick. Again, when I was looking at my godfather and all that, I was really, you know, Joel and like flipping out, Zach, even I forgot to mention um, Buffalo Pinball, uh, Bro Do Even. I'm a fan of those guys too. You know, I had no idea who the hell a Kaneda was until this whole like Twippy controversy happened. That's really when I heard Kaneda. But for the people that don't know, um, you could you you really can't see it there, but if you go to my videos, you will see that yes, I own a Godfather Collector's Edition. I'm in New York. I'm in Long Island. I do have a low ceiling. And now, if you don't know, the Godfather Collector's Edition has the topper with the gunners. And because I have a low ceiling, I had to modify my topper. And who is the first person to flame me? Kaneda. Now I modified my Godfather in September. So before this whole John Wick thing, again, Kaneda has mentioned and posted about me. Basically the gunners are right at the bottom of the back box. I'll post a, a video link here. You'll see it pop up, but yes, Kaneda made fun of my mod. 
And what's kind of crazy in Canada's, you know, me talking about Canada now, uh, I do follow his Facebook page. Um, you know, somebody's going to shit talk me. Uh, I'll follow you and I'll see what else you're going to do. But it's kind of, um, it's weird. And I mentioned this in a video before the comments, it like adds to the hate people like hate me. Uh, Canada even said it himself that I totally devalued this cabinet because of my mod. And I'm like, I made this mod to enjoy the gunners. And if I ever wanted to resell it, I could always put the topper back to stock. Yes, I added wires. I could always just remove my wires and make everything stock. That's what people just don't understand. I did not devalue my machine. <laughs> it's it's just it's a funny thing. It's it's pretty funny. So you know, even before this John Wick thing, Canada has mentioned me, and I like I mentioned before, I'm the type where I will read the comments and I'll answer the comments uh, later on after I talk about Canada. I'm gonna give you like my honest opinion, like you know just. Just, we're, just we're, we'll, we'll keep talking. You'll, you'll hear what I mean by that. But yes, Kaneda flamed me about my topper. And I just say it, I'm, enjoy, I'm able to enjoy my topper. Yes, I paid $15,000 for my Godfather. I had to modify it. I, I'm not going to put a two-foot hole in my ceiling. Somebody in New York did that. And they're blaming their wife. And they sold, they're trying to sell or they did sell their Godfather for like $500 less. Meanwhile, there's a big fucking gaping hole in your ceiling. If you see pin side, you'll know what I'm talking about. But yes, uh, Kaneda mentioned me first on that. Then I did go out and I got bobbleheads that's still not installed. But again, I have videos on this. He flamed me about my bobblehead idea. I basically got bobbleheads of Jack himself and um, Eric, the you know Eric Minier. Uh, and I was planning to put them on the play field. I have yet to do that. I've been kind of busy. And then the most recent are two posts. They're actually like screenshots of like my face and like kind of like me making like a like a frozen face. And uh, Kaneda just makes some comments about like, oh, look, Stern's got this guy talking about his John Wick. And I, you could go back on my video. Again, this is the review video. And uh, I do say there that, you know, Stern right now doesn't have really any machine that I desire. They don't have a theme that I want. And then I wrote there in parentheses, uh, except for Sopranos. Uh, I do. I would like a Sopranos, and I would like a Roller Coaster Tycoon. Fuck me, right? That's weird. But I would. <laughs> I would like those two. And then you get the comments like, "Oh, this guy is Italian, and he's a typical New Yorker, and he likes his mobsters." And uh, you know, the one thing that kind of, I I got kind of annoyed. In one comment, the guy wrote, "I don't trust anybody that owns a Godfather." and a toy story. And I just, I don't, I, I wrote that. I was like, explain. I don't understand what you mean. Like, what, is, what does that mean? Now I'm going to go into the realm. Again, that's Canada. Canada is Canada. Maybe one day you'll see me and Canada hanging out. Cause apparently he's in like Brooklyn. Uh, he's like 30 minutes away before I segue out. Now get this, this, this again, we're still talking about Canada, right? And now I'm going to bring up this thing about John Wick. Cause I wrote this in his comment section. I wrote to Canada and I said, hey, you know what, man? I was like, I got the invite. And a lot of people were also like, damn, Canada, you sound jealous. You sound jealous. And I, I don't think it was a jealousy thing, whatever, you know, you could think. I wrote to Canada and I said, this John Wick was shown in New York. And I wrote to him, I was like, isn't it funny? Like, you're in New York and you didn't get the invite. But I did, but I really didn't. You know, this is just me now trying to match Kaneda's energy. And I wrote to Kaneda, this is, I wrote it straight out. I didn't give a shit what the outcome was. I wrote to Kaneda, I said, you know what, dude, if you weren't such a dick to me, you know, making fun of my mods, maybe I would have reached out to you and maybe I would have invited you. Truthfully, honestly. But then I'm like, why am I going to invite you? You're a total dick to me. You're making fun of my topper mod. And again, if you go back on this post, I do reply to that. Like, you know, I, I don't want to say I take offense to it, but like, you know, again, I'm not a punching bag. I'm going to, I'll talk right back to you. I, I don't care. I don't care who I am. I can have a million followers. I'll still talk back to you. I'm human just like you are. So, you know, I basically was trying to say to Canada, like you're a dick, like, and amongst other people, he does come off as a dick, but 
it, you know, I just don't like it when you're a dick straight to me. <laughs> and I said to him, I was like, I could have invited you, but I didn't. So, you know, kind of thinking, kind of letting him know, like, you know, don't be such a dick. <laughs> But now, again, I do keep in mind that he is, you know, I, I kind of also think he's doing it for either entertainment purposes, he's just being Kaneda, that is what Kaneda is known to be like. I don't know. I don't know the dude totally, but I know deep down inside, maybe, you know, one day you'll see me hanging out with him at Jack Bar. I, I haven't been to Jack Bar yet. I'm in New York and I would go. And you know what? If I do go to Jack Bar, I'll send Kaneda a, a message and I'll say, hey, you know, if you want to come grab a drink. Uh, it just right now how this whole outcome came out. I kind of feel bad. I was like, damn, I should have invited. I should have invited him. He's in New York and he's very well known amongst the community. Again, I didn't know who got invited to this, but like I mentioned before, I didn't know I was going to meet Seth Davis. So what would have happened if I bought Kaneda with me and then he fucking meets Seth Davis? <laughs> He's a dick to me. I don't know. I mean, again, I only started following Canada, like, you know, I would say since the post. So figure since September. So, you know, nine, ten months. Um, yeah, that would have been probably scary and that probably would have been bad for me. But yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. It is what it is. I thought that was funny. Now, to end this video, I just want to go back again. Like I said, somebody in the comment section wrote there. I don't trust somebody that owns a godfather. And I just, I don't, I don't, I don't understand it. And that's kind of the, you know, this part right here, this is just me talking truthfully. Um, it's just, we all enjoy pinball. Who gives a shit if I like Godfather? I don't get it. It's a game. It's pinball. We play pinball. Now, you know, the other mind blowing thing about this whole John Wick reveal is the game is revealed. And everybody's going crazy about Gungate. And I got to play it. And, you know, it's a pinball machine. You go, you walk up to it. You're like, holy shit. You see all the lights. You start playing it. You're not looking at, like, guns. And I just think it sucks that, like, you know, this whole pinball community, they were just so focused on where the guns and you know it's a new it's a new game designer and instead of saying like dude you made a great game it's awesome everybody's like where are the fucking guns what like and now look now like i said imagine now a regular pinball content creator you know went and they come to the camera and they go there's no guns oh shit fuck me i i, I just i don't i don't get it i don't understand again what i'm trying to get at is that uh, you know, we all play pinball. Enjoy the game of pinball. Now, the one big thing, and get this again, this is just this, this is just off the cut. What was really frustrating to me was the assets. We I got the assets Monday 6 p.m. And if you go on pin side, somebody leaked the top of the play field, and I remember specifically. Uh, again, like I mentioned before, we got the unlisted YouTube video. What you guys saw, I got to see it Monday. It, it was it was unlisted. And when it was unlisted, I saw only six views on that video. So that means I saw it, probably B Kong, and then four other people saw it. And what really sucks is that one of those four other people took the screenshot and leaked it. And I think that sucks. I really think that sucks. And it brought me back to Jaws. The Jaws release where somebody leaked like the 360p pixelated footage. And like it, it kills it. it. It totally kills it. And uh, I actually have, I'm going to see real quick, but I may possibly have footage when I was talking to Seth Davis talking about that leak. Wow, um, I, I said, I, I, how do you manage to do tours and then hide the machine? That's, that's <laughs> quite a thing of you. Now also that's another thing I always figured like, you know, you guys have to, don't you just get annoyed when like leaks happen? It's, um, 
it's tough, you know, you want to give everything its best shot to succeed. On the other hand, I'd rather have everybody wants to know than everybody doesn't care. Right. You know, so, like, having enthusiasts is better than not having enthusiasts. It right. would be better if we were a little bit better at, you know, keeping things under wraps. But that I could see happening. So it's kind of tiers of, tiers of things you're worried about, right? Right. You know, so... Um, it's it's a tricky problem though. I mean, we, we love that we have an enthusiast community. We want to feed that, but um, you know, it can, it can be hard to to keep things organized and put them in the best light. I know. Especially when what leaks out is like a not finished version of a track. I know, because then people start judging it. Like, yeah. oh, what is this? And yeah. right, and you're like, well, that was the that was the month. That was like a whiteboard, you know? right? Like, that that's... was like that was the first draft. You know, that's what just like I said. It, I get. Uh... You know, not to mention you guys do put money, time into it to make sure, well, you know. I mean, the thing that you guys say, like, like this is people's jobs and livelihood. Yeah. Of like, that. Yeah. Like, we love that people are excited about it, but also, right, like, you know, it'd be yeah. be better if we got the chance to show everything. Right, to show it up like, properly. Yeah. Yes. And then, and then people decide what they're going to decide, right? It doesn't mean people don't get to decide what they're going to decide, but. Yeah, it's harder when judge it off what we want you know, to show. You know, well, blurry pictures of a game yeah. before we've announced it or stuff like that. Right. You know. That's what I said. I, I just get annoyed. Like, you know, sadly, that's... It sucks that it happens. And then I'm just there. I'm like, how does it happen exactly? Like, are we looking at, like, somebody on the inside job? Or... It's just, like I said, it just sucks that it happens. It, it does. Um, you know, so, look, it's a, it's a tight-knit sort of enthusiast community that is very excited about these things. So you gotta take the good with the bad too. I know, and again, like I said, the biggest thing is, uh, you know, seeing on pin side, you guys do have quite a um, an interest uh, when it comes to John Wick. So definitely, uh, you should be definitely expecting sales. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now I quickly turn off the camera, but Seth mentions to me that, you know, it sucks that they put so much time and effort, I don't really know about money, but they put a lot of time and effort to make those like reveal trailers and it sucks when it's leaked. And, uh, you know, I was, I was personally frustrated when I got the assets and, uh, you know, only six people saw this video. And then one of those six was like, Oh, I'm going to take a screenshot of the top. And then that, and then sure enough, if you look on pin side, Everybody's just going nuts. Everybody's like blasting it. Oh, it's a fan layout. But then people are like, oh, I wonder what that thing does. And it's like, it did what it did, but it just sucks to know that it was leaked. So now it kind of goes into the realm of like, you know, why doesn't Stern show people the game a week before? It's probably because of that. It's shit like that. That's why they don't want to show you the, the, the game uh, a week before and all that. They do put the trust in like a content creator um, and again, we do have an embargo. That was a thing. The only weird thing though is that we didn't like sign papers. We just got a letter that says embargo. You can't post anything until this date and time, which was May 7 at 12 p.m. So that's why like I had my video set for 12:15. This way you guys would be watching the reveal trailer and then the featurette and then my video would hopefully pop up at the end uh, um, of that. So you know, it just sucks. We're talking about like leaks that, that, that blows. I don't want to be a broken record, but you know, it's, we all enjoy the same thing. And that is flippers hitting a silver ball. You know, themes are, are an issue. And you know, it, if you really think about it, pinball has a theme for somebody. Uh, I like my Godfather, but for somebody to comment and go, I don't trust anybody that owns a God. What does that mean? What is what just because you don't like the Godfather means destroy the game and, and kill it. I, that's what just it frustrates me. Another big thing that frustrates me is that when somebody does something to their cabinet and makes them happy and somebody has to rain on that parade like, oh, that, like Luma legs, that guy gets flamed, but he thought he made a cool thing and he made legs, but it's just like, no, it's fucking stupid. And like I said, people make fun of my topper. Um, people make fun of the, uh, I have it here. People make fun of my mouse pad uh, playfield glass cover. Oh, you're gonna scratch your glass with that. It's always something, right? It's always something. And going back to, like I said, you know, 
John Wick, everybody's so frustrated about there's no guns. Uh, me as an outsider, you want to call me an outsider? I literally was sitting there and I was like, wow, you guys, not, I mean, not everybody, but I was like, wow, you're complaining about artwork. Like you're complaining about guns. Like you're not complaining about the designer or the game or the mechs. Like everybody was so focused on these guns. But now, like I mentioned before, there's a story behind everything. You know, Gungate was over once they heard that it was Lionsgate that said, we don't want guns. And, you know, everybody now is like, fuck you, Stern. Where the fuck? fuck? And then now you learn like, oh, okay. It's, it's just like Toy Story 4. From my understanding, you, they had to do Toy Story 4. They don't want Toy Story 1, 2, 3. That's not a Jersey Jack issue. That was their license thing. It, haven't you guys learned? Like, don't jump ship. There's always a story behind something. <laughs> I commence the flaming in the comments down below. But um, yes, as an outsider, um, Gungate, it made me laugh. And the only questionable thing now, uh, again, I don't know the exact details, but Gomez said that they're including a plastic that will have a gun on it that you could always swap out. It's located in the coin door. I said to myself, I was like, that was kind of fast for them to, you know, make a plastic. So were they anticipating this? Um, all in all, like I said, I could just imagine, you know, the designer just like, nobody's, nobody's like excited about my layout. They're just talking about there's no guns in the artwork. <laughs> and then he's probably like, that's not even my fault. Like, <laughs> I, I can't do anything about that. Well, there you guys have it. I hope I was able to clear up some things and just, again, do what I normally do. And that is talk a lot. Again, at least I play pinball. <laughs> and again, for B Kong, I, I actually messaged B Kong and I was thinking about doing like a live stream, but I didn't want to overtake him, him speaking or I didn't want him to, you know, talk over me or speak for me. I think this is the best way is for me to just sit down and make a video and just spill my guts out. So, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, if you didn't know us before and us meaning me, Vic VP and my buddy B, B Kong over at Kongs or us, I guess the pinball community knows us now <laughs> on that note, Vic VP, I enjoy pinball just like you guys do. So, uh, yeah, let's just keep doing what we love. And that is playing pinball. What's going on guys? Vic VP here. Stern officially releasing all the details on their new upcoming pinball machine known as John Wick. I had an amazing opportunity not just to play the game, but I got to meet and learn about the game from Stern's CEO himself, Seth Davis. But on this one today, I'm going to be giving you a story time on the day I went to go play John Wick. Man, this day was full of surprises. But before I could even start, I do have to give a big thank you and a big shout out, not only to Stern Pinball, but to my good friend B. Kong over at Kong's R Us. Without him, I would not have been able to get this amazing opportunity of a lifetime. Be sure to like and subscribe to Kong's R Us. B, I really, truly thank you and appreciate you even thinking about me, man. Thank you. Now, if you are new here, I do have a tendency to talk a lot, but there's always a story behind everything, and I do like to tell my stories. I'll go real quick with this one because everybody's here for gameplay footage and details and opinions on John Wick. Let me try to make this story short and sweet. It was a Monday afternoon. I was in the garage working, doing what I do best, and all of a sudden, I get a message from my buddy, B. Kong. He goes, hey, Vic, man, I have an amazing opportunity for you. Are you interested? I said, of course, B. Uh, of course I'm interested. What do you got for me, bro? He goes, hey, Vic, man, Stern Pinball is going to be in New York tomorrow. They're giving a couple of content creators an opportunity to play their new unreleased game. Are you interested? Yes, B. Yes, I'm highly interested. What do you need from me? What details do you have? Where? What? When? How? B Kong lets me know that somebody will be in contact with me. I have to now wait for this person. It is not a guarantee, so we have to wait for this person. He basically said, good luck, Vic. I said, B, I really appreciate you thinking about me, and I can't, I can't thank you enough. 
Hours go by, I get the invite from this person saying, hey, do you wanna come and check out Stern's new release? I didn't even know what the game was yet until about an hour later, I get a nice detailed overview of this game known as John Wick. Now I'm all excited, I got this email. They basically gave me two time slots that I could go and check out the game. I'm like a kid getting a new video game on Christmas day. After I discovered that it was John Wick, I quickly went to the wife and I said, hey babe, movie night, let's watch John Wick. Now we do have several movie based pinball machines, Godfather, Jaws, Indiana Jones, Labyrinth, just to name a few. So I had two options to go with here. Option one, don't watch the movie and see, can I enjoy this pinball machine? Or option two, don't totally embarrass myself in front of stern representatives and at least watch one John Wick film. I wanted to save myself from embarrassment so I obviously went with option two. But in all brutal honesty, you do not have to have seen John Wick movies to fully enjoy this game. The concept is simple. You are John Wick. There are other assassins trying to take you out while you're trying to finish your special assignment and escape your past. Now after just watching John Wick 1, I feel like I got the gist of the movie franchise. John Wick, an elite assassin. He's the guy that you call when you wanna take out the boogeyman. You got other assassins that are trying to take out this elitist and apparently he is unstoppable, especially for them to make four John Wick movies. Action packed stuff, a lot of fast sequences, in and outs, enemies coming at you from every direction, vehicles, because every assassin needs its signature vehicle, in this case the Mustang, and they need a companion, the dogs. That's the gist of John Wick. So now as I completed this movie, I'm trying to figure out how do they incorporate all this stuff into a pinball machine. The next day is the big day. I hop in the car, I head out to the location, and as I'm driving, I'm just trying to figure out, just like everybody else is, how does Stern Pinball take John Wick and make it into a pinball machine? I get to my location about 30 minutes before my appointment, going in and out, up and down floors. I finally reach my destination. I open the door, I look to my left, and there it is, the John Wick pinball machine behind a glass cubicle. Greeted by a lovely young lady, she goes, hey, are you Victor Vic VP? I said, I sure am. She said, you're a little bit early, you could hang out right here and wait until we are ready to bring you in. I said, A-okay, no problem, I'm getting all my camera equipment ready. Yes, I bought three cameras with me and I bought three tripods and a gimbal with me. I didn't wanna miss anything. No, I'm not exaggerating, I did bring three cameras with me. Yes, I bought tripods, I bought my gimbal, I wanted some smooth footage and all that. And as I'm unpacking, I kind of, I kind of take a step back and I say to myself, where is everybody? I was under the assumption that it's gonna be like a networking event. I'm gonna go into a warehouse, we're gonna see one pinball machine, I'm gonna meet other content creators and mingle and meet up and network. No. Surprise number one, I was alone. I got to learn and play the game one-on-one -on -one with Stern representatives. <laughs> Now, yes, I did mention in the video, there was a couple of surprises that day. So again, surprise number one, I was alone. Um, about five minutes before my appointment, I requested to go to the bathroom and I was like, you know what? Let me just message my buddy B. Uh, and I wrote to him, I said, dude, I'm alone. <laughs> B, I guess was busy, he didn't reply. I then quickly messaged the wife and I said, hey, uh, it's not like what I thought. I thought it was gonna be a networking thing and it turns out I'm alone. So my wife was like, don't worry, Vic, you got this. I kind of collected myself went back into the room, two gentlemen walking out of this glass cubicle, one by the name of Kyle, I said, hi Kyle, my name is Victor, and the second gentleman named Seth shakes my hand, he goes, hey Vic, we're very excited to show off this machine to you. And I said, I'm sorry, excuse me, did you just say your name is Seth? He goes, yes, I'm Seth Davis, the CEO of Stern. <laughs> Now yes, the last surprise of that day, I had no idea that I was actually going to meet the CEO of Stern Pinball. Not only did I meet him, he is the one that is explaining in detail to me about this game. The first two minutes of this whole appointment, my heart is racing, I'm partially sweating, and I know now that I'm gonna be able to play this game and I'm probably going to choke. I am going to embarrass myself 
in front of the CEO of Stern Pinball when he gives me the opportunity to press start on John Wick. Now keep in mind, this is my first time ever doing anything like this. Again, shout out B Kong for this amazing opportunity. This is my first time. Totally novice, totally noob, total amateur at this. I did know off the bat though, I wasn't gonna walk into this appointment with a camera in hand going crazy and all that. I did want to keep this professional. So for the first 30 minutes, it is me, Kyle, and Seth just talking as regular human beings about John Wick. Once we were ready to actually get some gameplay, Kyle hops on, gets ready to play. I said, Kyle, before you press start, man, can I start recording? They said, obviously you can. They actually kind of hinted that like you could have recorded this whole process. I didn't want to do that. You don't do that, especially, you know, whether I met the CEO or not, you don't really just come in with cameras blazing. Uh, so it was really great that I got a one-on-one -on -one experience learning the game of John Wick from the CEO himself. We then got to playing. Now, most of you don't know, but these content creator kind of appointments, I only have an hour. That's it. You can only do so much in an hour. As I'm walking through the glass door and I see the machine, I only have an hour. So I wanted to make sure, number one, I understood the game. Number two, I'm admiring the game. I'm looking at the art. I'm looking at the play field. I'm looking at stuff that, you know, catches my eye while I'm listening to Seth. And then also keep in mind that I have to record some footage for videos like this. So just keep in mind, I only had an hour. So I already could tell some people are gonna be upset with like the video quality or I didn't capture this and I didn't get game audio in that. Uh, again, it is what it is. I tried to capture everything and I didn't wanna just go guns blazing, uh, holding cameras up in people's faces. Now, if I remember correctly, Kyle is part of the programming team. I could be wrong on that, but the dude knew the ins and outs of this table. Right before he pressed start, I quickly grabbed my camera, put it on a gimbal, stood next to the machine, arm over glass, and I just pressed record. I wasn't looking through the camera, I was watching the game with my own eyes and just hopefully capturing what I can. I got some good footage, I know some people are gonna complain. It is what it is, I wanted to make sure I got some back box footage along with a little bit of the play field. Uh, all in all, I got what I got, but it was just pretty cool to see as Kyle is explaining the game, he's hitting shots, Luke Crate is opening, Mustang is coming out of the play field, he's getting the ball lock above the circle club. It was, it was pretty cool to see. But again, just pretty cool grabbing footage while Kyle, somebody that really knows the game hands on, is playing the game, watching him hit the shots. Then you see Seth hop on, he's hitting a couple of things, then they turn to me and they go, all right, Vic, it's your turn. And now it's my turn. Of course, zero pressure on me, right? I have nothing to worry about. There's just, you know, some casuals in the room. I could, I got this, right? I got this. No, I choked. I choked horribly. Um, <laughs> I got to start about, I would say, eight to nine games. Uh, of those nine games, I probably did fairly well at about five of them. Uh, I feel like even if you're a professional pinballer, you would have the same experience that I did. And again, keep in mind, I didn't have a lot of time. I only got to actually play for about, I would say 30 minutes. Um, I would say a handful of those games was like a three minute game, cause I just obviously just choked. Uh, but I got a couple of great experiences and satisfying shots. Hitting that Mustang is a pretty satisfying shot. Whether you hit it dead on, straight in the face, or if it does come out, Pretty cool shot. The loot crate with those three lights, you know, kind of showing and symbolizing the three drop targets. Very cool. Once it does open, goes into like the basement cellar kind of vibe to it. Very awesome feeling. Hitting the red circle club, that physical three ball lock ramp. That is a tough shot. I was honestly aiming for that a lot. And uh, unfortunately, I did not get to experience that multi-ball like Kyle did in my footage. Um, very cool to see that three ball lock. When the multi-ball starts, it drops the ball one by one. And I think you could hear Seth in the video. He kind of says like, yeah, it's like John Wick jumping down the stairs. It kind of gives you that, that feeling. Unlike Godzilla where all three balls kind of run at you, it was a very satisfying feeling seeing one ball drop at a time. 
Now at this time I did notice that my appointment timing is slowly coming to an end. So I decided to stop playing games, grab a camera, and grab some close-up footage of the play field, artwork, back box, and the cabinet overall. Now as I'm taking this B-roll footage, Seth whips out his computer. He goes, hey Vic man, let me show you the different art packages. He showed me the Pro. I was obviously looking at a premium. And he also showed me the LE. LE back glass, man, what a thing of beauty. Not only does it look like stained glass, the gold trim you see there, that gold accent, it actually has a little bump mimicking stained glass. I pack my bag, shake hands with Kyle and Seth, thank them very much for an amazing opportunity, and I'm on my merry way. As I'm heading home, I'm on cloud nine, still in shock of what I just got to experience in this past hour. As I get home, I messaged B. Kong. I told B. Kong, hey bro, thank you so much. I really can't thank you enough for this experience. Shoot me a message once you get to play your game. I didn't want to spoil anything. I didn't let him know about any details. I just said, hey, once you're done with your experience, give me a call. I'm not going to spoil it for the dude. He's the one that got me in the situation in the first place. So later on, a couple hours later, B. Kong calls me up, tells me about his amazing experience, and that was the end of the day. Man, what a day it was. Again, a big shout out to B-Kong. Thank you so much for even thinking about me and what an amazing opportunity. Well, there you guys have it. I hope you enjoyed this little story time on the day I went to go play John Wick before it was even announced. Again, I can't say thank you enough to my buddy B-Kong. Be sure to like and subscribe to Kongs R Us and also to me. Be sure to stay tuned. I have a couple more videos. Definitely want to stay tuned for those raw uncut straight footage videos. Thanks for watching.